Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a good morning. In today's video, let's take a look at how to build out some really cool looking animations uh, inside of our application. And we're going to be using some pretty easy and basic techniques in today's video. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this animation is inside of the simulator right here. And uh, basically, we are looking at a screenshot of the Facebook live stream feature. And uh, inside of this feature, you can click on one of these icons on the bottom and then you animate some icons across the screen. So that's what the Facebook live stream feature allows you to do. And I was taking a look at one of these uh, animations inside of their application and I wanted to figure out how to animate something like this. So if you take a look at how these uh, images are scrolling across the screen, it's basically being animated across some kind of path. And that path has a curve where there's a kind of a tangent point up here, a tangent point at the bottom down here, and then it kind of scrolls back up at the very end. So doing some research, uh, this animation style is actually, actually pretty easy to build out. And I'm gonna show you how to build it right now using Xcode. So let's see what we can do with this single view application right here. I'm just gonna run it and it's going to give me a white screen. Okay, so a pretty good starting point. Hope you guys are all familiar with how to create these single view applications. And the first thing we need to do for this type of uh, little curve here is to visualize the curve uh, using some kind of UI view first. And I'm gonna show you how to draw this curve out right now that kind of goes up and down like that. So uh, the first thing to do is to remove these unnecessary methods and comments and kind of subclass this uh, view. Let's call it curve view and subclass UI view right here. And inside of this view, let's override draw. And here we will do some fancy curve drawing. Okay, so in order to kind of render this view out, I want to add it onto the view controller. Let's do it by creating this curved view equals, you know, curved view with a frame of the views frame. And then finally curved view background color let's see color equals dot yellow and now we can just add it into the uh, view controller with add sub view of curved view like that so what is this going to give us when the application runs well we just render out a yellow background for the entire app like that so pretty straightforward i would hope and let's see how to draw some uh, curves inside of this curved view right now I'm going to say let path equals UI Bezier path. And a Bezier path is kind of a, a set of line segments that can potentially have curves to it. And so this path, you need to uh, be able to stroke it like that. And you can't stroke it until, or until you provide two points, a, a starting point, which you call with move to. And let's move to the point of CG point like this. And the X value will be zero. The Y value will be 200. And then you have to say something like add a line to create a line in your path. And the end points I will create up here. And let's just use the CG points of, you know, X of perhaps 200 and Y of 200. So end point looks like this. And now you can run the application and perhaps stroke it with some kind of black uh, color by default. So let's run this and then you get this very, very thin line like that. If you want to change perhaps the uh, line width, you can do something like that, setting it equal to three. I'm also going to move the endpoint uh, over to the right a little bit by increasing the uh, X value by a hundred and try to render this out to see what we get inside of our app. So that's what it looks like. And instead of using add line, you can uh, add curves to your line instead by adding a curve. So let's say add curve like that. And uh, let me just get some space down here. So what is this curve? Well, the curve has to take in this uh, endpoint as the very first parameter. And it also takes in these two control points right here. So to show you what the control points will do, I'm going to put a control point here and here. And uh, let's create it right here. CP1 equals CG points of, let's see, X100, 200, 
and then let CP2 equals CG points of, let's see, X of 200 and 200, and CP1, CP2, and run this application to kind of get a straight line just like what we had before. And uh, let's see, yellow background, straight line. And uh, basically, CP1 is here and CP1 is 2. So I'm going to modify it and pull CP1 up and bring CP2 down. So control point 1, I'll modify the Y to be 100 and the second one uh, with a Y of 300. And let's just draw this out and you'll start to see what the curve is going to do. It goes up, goes down, and it ends at the end point right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this end point all the way to the right by changing end point's X value to 400 and you'll see the curve adjust just a little bit uh, because of the final endpoint uh, being changed so it goes like that and it has a longer tail is kind of how you would imagine it so this is how one of these paths are being drawn inside of this application right here and we're going to animate across one of these paths all right so the first step of drawing a path is kind of complete now I actually want to modify the code a little bit so I can use this path outside of this class. So inside of Swift, you can just create these functions like this. I'm going to call it custom path and return some kind of UI Bezier path. Inside of here, let's just copy and paste a little bit of code here. Uh, let me just rather, uh, instead of copying, I'll use a cut, paste that and return path like that. And here, let's say let path equals custom path, which will run and draw uh, pretty much exactly the same thing here. Okay, let's wait for the yellow background and our curve that looks just like that. And that's pretty good. Now what I want to do is to uh, create some kind of animation with a different view. I'm going to say let uh, perhaps uh, image view equals UI image view like so and use the image constructor. And uh, to kind of select an image, I will go into Finder right here and uh, grab these two images, put it in here, and we get the heart and the thumbs up icon. So pretty easy stuff. If you want to download this project and right click here, show in Finder, you can actually grab these images just like that. All right, so go to View Controller and now I'll use perhaps thumbs up, which shows up like that. And here I will set the frame on this guy to be a CG rect of X, Y, 0, 0, 30, 30. And then let's say view, uh, add sub view of the image view like so. And I can see one slight error. I want to actually add the curve view uh, first so it appears behind this guy. So let's run this now. And you're gonna see this thumbs up icon at the very top left because of the origin point of zero, zero. So that's what you get up there, right? So now I wanna animate this thumbs up across this entire curve. This is pretty easy now that we have this custom path down here. And all you have to do is first, you want to say, you know, image view dot uh, add animation or layer dot add animation. And so for the key, we'll uh, use just nil. And what is this animation guy? Well, let's just create animation equals CA frame, see animation, and we will use the key path of position. So this animation will animate this image view across some kind of position. So having that, we will paste the animation there. And what is the path of the animation? Well, let's just use custom path. And it turns out uh, this path variable here is actually some kind of a CG path, so you need to get the CG path out of the UI Bezier path. And now you can actually set some kind of duration on the animation. And let's just perhaps give it a value of two. So running this, uh, the thumbs up icon will just animate along the path of the curve, just like that. And then it kind of goes back up to the beginning. Uh, to remove it, you can just say uh, fill mode equals uh, forwards, like that, fill mode forwards, and then also animation uh, is removed on completion. You have to just set it to false so that you remove it when it's done animating. Kind of a counterintuitive property right here. 
animates across, goes to the very end at 400, down here, X value at 400, and it just kind of removes itself. So that's how the animation works. And what we want to be able to do is perhaps animate it using some kind of curve. So you say timing function, you will see a media timing function like that. And you can give it a name of KCA is out. So a lot of uh, fancy names here, but that's kind of how these animations work by providing curves and make it a little bit, you know, have a acceleration at the beginning and then it kind of slows down at the very end there. So now I want to sort of remove this curve view from the actual application. And the way to introduce some variations to the thumbs up animation is actually quite simple. So you see a lot of different Y values and the sizing of the, uh, the thumbs up actually changes inside of this version of the application. And so to change the sizing, uh, we just need to change the width and the height. So I'm going to say let dimension right here equals D rand of 48 and say times 20 or perhaps uh, times 10. And I'm also going to add to this DRAND. And let me just paste it in here and explain what DRAND does. I'm going to run this, right? So DRAND just gives you a random number from 0 to 1 and uh, multiply it by 10, which means that this little icon here is going to have the width and height of somewhere between 20 and 30. So that's what this math does. And in order to, you know, animate a bunch of these uh, thumbs up across the screen like that, what I'm going to do is to uh, handle the UI tap gesture by adding one inside of the entire view. So let's say view, you know, dot add gesture like that, UI tap gesture. And let's use the target of self and selector it will be selector or pound selector, handle tap. And inside of this handle tap guy, which I'll create down here, uh, we're going to add a bunch of these uh, thumbs up like that. So the easy, the easy way of doing this is to just use a for loop. I'm going to say zero dot 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 ten for each, and hit enter. Use an underscore, and here I'll say uh, perhaps generate uh, generate uh, animated views like that. And this function I'll create as well. So somewhere down here, you know, perhaps file private function if you want to make your functions private and uh, call this method here. And this method, we're going to execute the drawing of this guy uh, 10 times by cutting here and then pasting down here. Okay. So I think we also need this to be executed down here as well. So I'm going to run this and it's going to draw this thumbs up icon just somewhere uh, across the screen. So let's just hit that. And there's actually 10 of those guys because we're executing this loop about 10 times. Uh, to get it to show up in a more random distribution, such as this right here, uh, you just need to modify the path a little bit for each one of these uh, Bezier paths. So going back down to the custom path, we can modify this by introducing some uh, randomness to the CP at uh, the control points of your curve. So I'm going to go down here and use the, let's see, random Y shift equals D rand. And I'm going to multiply it by perhaps 300. And uh, I'm going to also add 200 to it. And you can, you know, play around with these values until you're happy with the animation. I'm going to subtract the random Y shift and then plus random Y shift on the second control point. So basically this means that for each one of these custom uh, paths, it's going to go up by a little bit more and go down by a little bit more as you are kind of uh, animating it across. And then finally, to get it, uh, the images to appear on a different kind of a different uh, X value as it's animating across. For example, you want to make sure it's not all grouped on the same uh, Y line. 
uh, all you have to do is to uh, give the duration some uh, randomness to it. So instead of just all animating for two seconds, you can just change the duration of this animation right here. And I'm also going to add a DRAND of some value times three, perhaps. And so what this means is uh, all the animations will be uh, at least two seconds with this multiplier of zero and a three. And that gives you this right here. So you see, it's a very nice curve, right? And that's kind of what you get there. Uh, to introduce the uh, randomness of the heart and the thumb icon is also pretty easy. I think some of you guys can figure out by now, but I'm going to use this uh, little piece of math right here and say let image equals DRAND of that and if this is greater than 0 0.5, we will use the thumbs up guy. Otherwise, we'll use the, I think, the heart icon. And here, we'll just replace the image with uh, the actual image right there. So DRAND, again, gives you a random uh, value between 0 and 1. And so that randomness will introduce uh, a kind of a separation of all your images with a heart and a thumbs up like that. So this might be appearing a little choppy in this recording here, but basically it kind of looks like that. Um, and there you go. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. And now that you know how to create this style of animation, you can build on top of this idea to create something even cooler. So make sure to let me know down below on what type of projects you guys are able to create. And finally, if you want to learn more about Swift development, you can check out the latest course on how to build out the Instagram application. Uh, inside of this course, we learn how to build out some really nice looking login pages, upload images to Firebase, render out a home feed, and then finally kind of learn how to use the camera to capture some really nice photos inside of your application. I really think you're going to enjoy that course. And so make sure to check out the course preview using the link in the description below. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Keep on coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.